practically all um, facets of our facets, the word I was looking for. Oh, I was going to say ends, but that's not right. All ends of our medium. She's appeared in every facet. She has uh, appeared on stage, screen, television, and this is television. And she'll be starring. <laughs> and Neil Simon's got a new play called I Ought to Be in Pictures. It opens here at the Mark Taper f uh, on January 17th. She's also appearing in the Martian Chronicles, which airs on NBC at the end of January. I don't think she's been here before, has she? She's with us, she has. She hasn't been with me. No. But she was here before on the show. Yes. Well, then she could have been here many times. <laughs> <laughs> Would you welcome Joyce Van Patten? <laughs> this is the first time we have worked together, right? Yes. But you it's... have been here before. I have, but it's nice not to have a television screen between us. <laughs> yes, it's nice to have you here. Yeah, Happy holidays. It's really nice to be here. Are you done with all the holiday stuff? Are you one of these people who gets depressed? Are you the holidays pick you up? A lot of people go the other way. I, the pressure uh, is too I much. I made a recent discovery about that. I used huh? to always feel very depressed about the holidays. Now I discover that it has everything to do with where my life is at. It has nothing to do with the holidays. Ah, <laughs> and I things... used to put that on the holidays because things weren't going right one way or the other. And That's I'd say, ah, oh, the holidays are here. But now I realize that if my life is going right, holidays are great. That's probably true. It's, like, it's similar to that business about people say, I don't like to work in New York or I don't like to live in Los Angeles. You can work any place if things are going well there. I People so. will blame it on a town, you know. They're unhappy if they've had an unhappy experience. I don't like Los Angeles, but things weren't going well, so that's probably true. That's right. Are you a member of the club somebody told me about called? Sure. I, I've, I've, seen this, <laughs> I've seen this group before. Called the Penguins? Yeah. That do strange things uh, in the winter? Yeah. Is this from New York? Uh, oh, no. The, the ones in New York are polar bears. Oh, that's right. That's right. The ones out here, uh, I'll tell you what a penguin does. Okay. A penguin goes on the first day of the new year at uh, 12 o'clock. And they stand on a noon, beach. 12 o'clock 12 o'clock noon. noon. Okay. And there's uh, about 80 of us. And then a siren goes off down at little, the breakwater in Venice. A siren goes off, and all the penguins <laughs> together let out a kind of yell. And they jump into the water, and they swim out 100 feet. And there's a lifeguard in a, a boat. Right. And, and he talks you through if you're having trouble. Right. Because it's cold, you know. Some right. people can't get their breath. Some people panic. Water can get very cold. And you go back and around, and then you are a penguin. You arrive back on the shore, and you're a penguin. Now, here's the big news. Mm -hmm. uh, Dickie, my brother Dickie, was a penguin first, you know. I would guess. Yeah. <laughs> he sort of told me that my life was not going to be any good if I didn't become a penguin. He said it would bring me luck. It would bring me fortune. I, was I would say, lose why, weight. I was going to say, why do you do this? <laughs> well, it was his influence, but... Yes. First of all, I discovered that he was right, and it is a terrific feeling, and you really feel like you've started the new year in a positive way. Do you way. go regardless of the weather? Yeah, but it's been, I have to not, I cannot lie, it's been wonderful days, you know, the, uh, each New Year's Day that I've done it, it's been sunny. The water temperature, the worst, was like 56. So that's... That's, that's cool. It's cold, you know? But, uh, it was two things happened. First of all, there's penguin fever that occurs. And uh, what, what that is, that there are some people that come there just to look at the penguins go in, and they get the fever, and they go in, too. And uh, we had a, one of our aunts visiting us from New York, and she's just there in a caftan or a moo, -moo just to watch she, us. She got penguin fever. Got penguin fever. <laughs> and she leaped in, and someone had to give her a robe later. Had your aunt had a couple of blasts up before? <laughs> With the polar bears now, you, that's something different. That's These people go down, and it's, there's ice and they go right into the... Can you believe Now, that's got to be really cold. Yeah, and that's no, there's no joy to that. <laughs> <laughs> but there's joy to being a penguin. There's joy, and I'm going to be the queen of the penguins. Ah. Uh, <laughs> that's nice. As that's of the first, thank you. Title, <laughs> title that comes to few people in our lifetime. <laughs> queen of the, can a fellow yeah. be the queen of the penguins? Dickie uh, is the king. Ah, uh, oh. Dickie and Pat were king and queen last year, and myself and my father are going to be king and queen this year. Um, and so from now, I started how you, first. How do you get to be, uh, if I joined the Penguins, what would my chances be of becoming the king but within a reasonable amount of time? Because well, I don't like to spend a lot of time in any group where I can't. <laughs> <coughs> I want to be the king within, you know, pretty short, short order. <laughs> I understand that. Yeah. It's nice to be at the top. <laughs> That's right. You know, lots of penguins ahead of Doc Simon has written another, oh, another play. It's so good. He's had an incredible string of successes, something like, what, 13 or... I guess. I, I, people have lost count about the plays and the motion pictures. This is called I Ought to Be in Pictures. Yeah, Tony Curtis is the star. Yeah. And he's just wonderful. 
I just, I'm so excited about him, because I've always thought he was a wonderful actor, yeah. but I don't think he's done any stage work, and he's so... I don't know whether Tony has or not. I don't not think sure. he has. If he has, it was a long time ago. And that yeah. part of it is exciting. And with all the great plays that Neil Simon has written, this is truly the best. It's has he ever had what, what we would call in this business a failure? I'm trying to yeah. think of something that really bombed out, and I can't right offhand. Didn't the Star Spangled Girl? <clears throat> I'm sure some have not had, uh, I mean... Had, great lady, I don't don't think was a big success. Was not the biggest success, but everybody has those. Yeah. They, no, this is really His wonderful. percentage is incredible. Did you, uh, I enjoy talking with your brother. Because yeah. he grew up, did you grow up as a child actress also? Yes. Did you I start, did. young Dick started when he was about six? Oh, yeah. I think. He had it, well, he not only started as an actor when he was six, well, actually he started as a little boy model. Right, that's he right. He was such a beautiful child and, and, uh, and he just, you know, my mother, got all these compliments on how beautiful he was, and mm. he should be a model, and he became a model, and he was exquisite. I get the, the feeling covers. that he enjoyed it. Is that, is that true? Or? Yes. I, I, I really, I, I perceived it differently than he. Yeah. Uh, we have different vision of it. And he, to him, it was all like an adventure, which is sort of the way he treats life, you right. know? He really enjoys it all. I had more problems with it, you know? And it In took, what way? I, uh, well, I didn't mind doing it as a child so much as I, the, the shock to me was when I was 11 and I was no longer adorable and young because I developed and I got tall and suddenly I was no longer. You went from that little cute child to going yeah. through, yeah. And that was a difficult time and it was very difficult for me to understand what had happened because I just, I just didn't get it and suddenly growing up and being tall were things you didn't want to be rather than That's things funny. that you could be. I never thought of that. Yeah. Probably affects a gal more than it does a, I don't know. the boy, I don't know why. You wouldn't think so. Let really. me take a break. We'll do a commercial. We'll come right back. Stay where you are. Oh, no. yeah. we're, we're talking about... <clears throat> we're talking with Joyce Van Patten. We're talking about your brother, Dick. I would dare say that the same thing happens to you that happened to him, but not to him so much anymore because of television and the tremendous success of the show that he's doing. But he's been a good actor in all forms of uh, acting, and yet he wasn't known. I mean, people would say, I know that face. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, he's on Eight is Enough, and it's a huge, huge success, and now they know him. But you, I know people must come up to you and say, because oh. I've seen time. you many, many times, you see the face, you get that all the time? Oh, yeah. And I does that give, make you insecure and say, well, they don't know me, they know, but they don't. I choose to take it as a compliment. Right. However, after a while, you know, you just kind of get used to it. Just recently, I was sitting at a hamburger stand, Right. And this guy's looking at me, and I knew the look, you know, I knew the look. So he looks at Trying me and he says, uh, I know you, don't I? I know you. Uh, and I said, and then, and then you don't know what to say. You never know whether to say well, I'm an So I said, no, no, you don't know me. And he says, I know you. Uh, I work with you, don't I? I've worked with you. And I said, no, no, I don't think so. And he says, come on, come on, I know you, I know you. I said, well, all right, all right. I'm in television. He said, Sears? <laughs> Sears? <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> Oh, that's wonderful. Sears? That's got to happen all the time. What kind of look I have, you know, they always think that that, or that I, that I went to school. With them. Well, that's funny. You know, I've, I've talked to some actors, but, and it must be very frustrating when you've been in the public eye a long time, and you're not known. There's a certain advantage in that, because you can play many, many different roles. But you know what'll happen sometimes to some people? They'll say, I, I know you, and then the guy will say, well, I'm in television. And then the people say, what have you done? Did you ever get that? And they'll say, what, if, what have I seen you in? Isn't now you're saying, well, I was in so-and-so, and I say, no, I didn't see that. Now you mentioned something else, no, I didn't see that. Well, I was in a movie, no, I didn't see that. Now you've got to sit and list your credits. Do you know that I've been standing in the, in the uh, parking lots of supermarkets explaining Love American Styles to people? Well, maybe you saw the one I did with Larry Storch. Remember, he couldn't sleep. Actually, they're giving no, I didn't. Clock. No, I didn't see that. <laughs> I know you. You ever get the thing where, uh, I remember when I first started in the business, well, you're really not known, and you say you go to a premiere, which I'm not too hot on, or opening nights, and people would come up, you know, and look at you and say, are you anybody? <laughs> and I've seen them do that to pretty good actors who are known, and, you know, they know that, and they'll say, are you anybody? And I don't know how one answers. They say, yeah, I'm so-and-so. Or, no, I'm not anybody. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to take a break. Charles Nelson Riley's here tonight. O.J. Simpson, stay where you are. We'll be right back.